Both chambers of Congress are gearing up for an interesting and potentially brutal immigration debate. This is The Hill is now reporting frustrated conservative lawmakers are pressuring House Speaker Paul Ryan to put a hardline immigration bill on the floor in the coming weeks or risk a revolt within his own ranks. The right reportedly feels burned in the wake of recent budget negotiations. House Freedom Caucus member Jim Jordan said, quote, the budget bill that passed last week wasn't consistent with what we told the voters we were going to do. We had better get it right on immigration. Let's bring in a power panel indeed. Jake Maccabee is a former chief speech writer for U.S. Attorneys General uh, Loretta Lynch and Eric Holder. Steve Lonigan is a former Ted Cruz campaign director for the state of New Jersey. Great to see you both. Steve, I'm going to start with this. Within the ranks, there could be a problem. Why? Well, the ranks include all the people who voted for Donald Trump, who ran an agenda of building a wall and reforming our uh, immigration program. It was a very powerful message. So when you talk about Congressman uh, Speaker Ryan mm -hmm. potentially dissing the conservative base, it's a lot more than that. It's the entire base that has now moved into the Republican Party and put this country in a whole new direction. I think we better be careful to remember it's the president we're talking about here and his agenda, not just the conservative base. Jake? Well, you know, I think we have to talk about the fact that uh, the country is more than just the base of the Republican Party. And if, uh, and if Speaker Ryan had any political courage at all, uh, he would step forward with a clean DACA bill that could pass the House and the Senate, <coughs> could sail right through, you get it passed today. And so the president... What does that mean by a clean DACA bill? Just give, give amnesty to 1.8 million so-called DACA illegal aliens? Well, I think keep our promises to the folks who are covered by DACA and not try to load it up with a bunch of, um, with a bunch of reactionary legislation that guts our communities and hurts our... I, I don't think building a wall and ending chain migration, ending a lottery system that's failed miserably and re returning to a merit-based immigration system is called gutting immigration policy. I'm talking about... It's, 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 it's standing up for what the people of America want, and that's putting Americans first. The bill that you're talking <laughs> about criminalizes poverty in part in, by... Well, well we should criminalize poverty. That's a good idea. Maybe well, we can make that work. Criminalize poverty? I, I mean, well, it means, it means that if any, uh, if any of these people covered under DACA ends up... Uh, with uh, wealth that is less than 125% uh, of, uh, the, of the poverty level, then they end up being criminalized. They end up not only subject to deportation, well, look, but they have to go to jail. When I said criminalize poverty, we would like to eliminate poverty in this country, but after 50 years of failed liberal programs, we failed to do that miserably. If you want to end poverty in this country, the way to do it isn't the to get $1.5 billion is to, in tax cuts no, the way to do it, in America. The way to do it is to cut taxes, which Donald Trump has done, uh, create more money into the pockets of Americans, which Donald Trump has done, and grow the economy. The question and that's what's happening right now. To. The host Everybody. is actually going to say something. That was fascinating, though, by the way, because I know when to get out of the way of an interesting conversation. Let me interject this. Senator Chuck Schumer has led your party, Jake, to uh, what many on social media, not just Republicans, have called the Schumer shutdown of the government a couple of weeks ago. It gets complicated when you are the sticky wicket, is what I called him last hour, uh, because now he's saying, let's not talk about sanctuary cities or any of that. Let's just stay on the dreamers and immigration. I I'm wondering, are you willing to, as a Democrat, watch Chuck Schumer? or shut this down when the president says this is the best case you're going to get and the clock is ticking. I think part of the problem is that Donald Trump hasn't really been a very reliable negotiator. Democrats came to him with a deal in September that he said yes to. Then he turned his back on it, came to him with a bipartisan proposal that he walked away from. It's been really, really difficult to nail Donald Trump down on anything, which is why when we were talking about negotiations during the last shutdown, he kind of had to stay out of the way in order to get this thing done. Is that why he stayed out of the way? Because it was pretty political. I, I mean, it was it was a powder keg for him. Well, he's never had a problem person. jumping into any right. of these things. Right. You, you, you know what Americans care about? They care about what the, the the president is doing. Job growth, economic growth. We're heading towards 4% GDP by the third quarter of this year, if not better. We're heading towards unemployment dropping below 4%. The lowest level of black unemployment rate ever in history, according to the president. And I believe him 100%. Here's the problem the Democrats have. Nancy Pelosi, early in your show, you read her letter. Someone read her letter about how we need to now denounce everything Donald Trump is doing. But they nothing to replace it. They have no vision of this country. The president has a vision. That vision is working. Here's the problem the Democrats have. By November of this year, you're going to see Latinos moving into the Republican Party. You're going to see women moving into the Republican Party. You're going to see the president counter the historic norm and Republicans pick up seats in Congress because of one simple reason. It's the economy, stupid. And remember where that came from. All right, gentlemen, stay put. It's... 
It looks like Hillary Clinton has settled on a strategy for the midterms. The Washington Post is reporting she plans to, quote, leverage the star power she retains in some Democratic circles on behalf of select candidates while remaining sufficiently below the radar to avoid becoming a useful target for Republicans seeking to rile up their base, in quote. Power panel back now, Jake McAbee and Steve Lonigan. And Steve, you're laughing. Why? Oh, I just hope that Hillary Clinton emerges in, in, in the Democrat campaign this October. I couldn't ask for a better albatross to hang around the necks of Democrat candidates. I mean, this is, you know, they can, we can remind the Democrat base that her Clinton criminal organization, you know, rigged and stole the election from Bernie Sanders. So they can, they can have that discussion. Jake? <laughs> I mean, this is definitely going to be an exciting election. 2018 is exciting. We've got a record number of Democratic uh, candidates. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Get no, to no, the point. Me, well, let's get to it. The, the reality is that this election, uh, as much as uh, Mayor Lonergan would like, it's not going to be about Hillary Clinton. This election is going to be about better jobs, better wages, and a better future. Thank can, you. can I ask you a Thank bold you very question? Much about Please, right? I mean, because I think everybody agrees on that, right? What in the world are Democrats going to do with Hillary Clinton if she decides she doesn't to know get that. in there? Right, exactly right. They could get her to go, they want her to go away, and she won't. Jake is absolutely right. This election is it's going to be about jobs, it's going to be about wages, and it's going to be about the economy. I've said that over and over again. Thank you, Jake, for reinforcing Jake, what are you going to do with Hillary Clinton? Well, I don't think it's up to anyone what to do with her. I think that she is a private citizen who gets to do these things that she, if she wants to. And I think, frankly, that's a little hypocritical uh, for Mayor Lonigan to say that people who have been beaten in elections should retire from public life. I happen to think that people uh, who have been involved in public life should stay involved in public life, including Secretary Clinton, including Mayor Lonigan, including anybody else who wants I'm, to contribute I'm, I'm their voice. I'm going to be going to church, Jake, and lighting a candle to, to just pray that Hillary Clinton comes back into the cycle and puts her face out there for the Democrat Party. I think that she's, I think that she is, uh, I don't think that she's looking to put her face out for the Democratic Party. I think that she's looking to contribute like millions of other Americans so, who want to be a part of this. Jake, uh, when you look at where Hillary Clinton is now, though, um, what type of role would you really like to see her play? If she starts popping up for candidates and, you know, she has the ability to attach herself to a platform, she had her own. Uh, not enough of it, as we've talked about here many, many times, had to do with the economy. And you don't have to say it here. You can go and ask the voters that. Where do you see her? Well, I think that uh, I think she's exploring that right now. I think that she's looking to raise money for organizations do you need her? that are. Also, I think we're excited about the opportunity to get as many people involved in this campaign as we can. We've got record numbers of candidates, record numbers of women, and record numbers of people around the country who are does getting it, involved in the way they can. Does it bother you that you've got somebody, Hillary Clinton and you know, you've got <clears throat> other faces in the party, Nancy Pelosi mm -hmm. and others, who are really of a different guard now? You've, you've got a new generation that would like to come up. Well, I don't think that the uh, that interest in changing um, in changing the way Washington works stops at a certain age. I think there are plenty of older Americans who are interested in making a change as well. Look, the only message coming out of Hillary Clinton and Nancy Pelosi is they're against anything Trump does. That's all, all right. they have to say. They have nothing positive to say, and voters are smart of that. They're looking at jobs and looking run. at the economy. Steve, Jake, thank you so much. We'll be right back.